Hey there, YouTubers. BMAC here. It is Sunday, October 17th. Totally forgot about doing this vlog, which I was supposed to produce last weekend, the Thanksgiving long weekend here in Canada. Going to share some broadcasting related images that I captured on Sunday, October 8th, 2006. I was in Kingston for Thanksgiving weekend 06, spending some time with my maternal aunt and uncle who live in the city's west end, and my youngest sister was there too. And on the Sunday morning, I went downtown, took the ferry to Wolf Island, and checked out two of the three broadcast transmitter sites on the island just south of Kingston. And at that time, K-Town still had two commercial AM stations, and both transmitted from Wolf Island, but both converted to FM within the next couple of years. So first up is the 1,000-foot CKWS Tower on County Road 95, about halfway between Marysville and Point Alexandria. And this tower was built in the latter half of 1998, after CKWS's previous 870-foot tower collapsed in the ice storm in January of 98. But in 2006, the TV station was still on Analog Channel 11 from that side-mounted antenna at the top of the tower, and further down are the FM antennas for co-owned CFMK 96.3 and for competitor CIKR 105.7, which signed on in 2001. Not far from the TV tower was the transmitter site of CKWS's AM sister, CFFX, the erstwhile CKWS Radio 96. And CFFX had a six-tower directional array on the fifth line near the island's north shore. The station was doing 10,000 watts on 960 with separate coverage patterns for daytime and nighttime broadcasting. I'm going to do a separate video sometime soon talking about AM radio transmission in general and how it all works, but in the meantime, here's a look at the base of one of the six CFFX towers and that little black thing. At the bottom of the tower is a ceramic base insulator, and that thing isolates the tower from the ground because AM transmitting towers are actually antennas or vertical radiators. The whole tower is a live antenna and if you touch that tower when you're standing on the ground and it's on the air, the RF energy is going to fry you. Now, unfortunately, I did not get to the CKLC transmitter site near Dawson Point, but I do have some more to show you from the mainland. And when I got off the Wolf Islander 3 ferry at Kingston, there's a hand-drawn map inside the ferry terminal at the foot of Barrack Street, and on that map... The artist marked the CKWS TV tower, but alas, no sign of the AM stations. So back downtown I go, and here is the CKWS building at 170 Queen Street. And the TV station's been here since day one back in 1954. And the radio stations are here too, but for a couple of decades they were in their own little space way up in the north end on Counter Street just south of the 401. And I think it was 2002 that the radio stations moved back in with TV. But what you see in this photo is only a small part of the studio building. It extends pretty far back to the left in this photo in an L shape toward Montreal Street. And here's a shot of the STL tower, the studio transmitter link tower above the studios with all the UHF and microwave antennas pointing at Wolf Island. Plus there's the CKWS Skycam up there, that little pan-tilt-zoom dome camera at the very top. And next is this old bank building at the northwest corner of Brock and Wellington Streets. And from the 1950s to 2005, radio stations CKLC and CFLY were on the upper floors of this 1840s vintage building. And the address was originally 99 Brock Street and later 168 Wellington. And a classmate of mine in college worked here for a few years after his graduation, and it was a nice facility from what I saw. Station's offices were on the second floor, and the studios and newsroom were on the third floor, and I think the tech center was just above the studios. But CKLC and CFLY moved out of here around the summer of 05, and since then, they've been way out on Princess Street, only a stone's throw from competitors K-Rock 1057 and Country 93.5, who are in the Rosen building at Princess and Concession. 
And across from the old CKLC CFLY studios on Wellington Street was the Right Spot Restaurant. And this was the breakfast spot for longtime CKLC morning host Greg Hunter, a fellow Loyalist Radio alum, class of 1977. And I believe he actually hosted his final CFLY morning show here before he went back to the Belleville area. And our final stop on the tour today is Kingston Collegiate and Vocational Institute on Frontenac Street, just off of the Queen's University main campus. And KCVI is home to a low-power community radio station known as CKVI 91.9 The Cave. And students of Kingston's public high schools would operate the station as part of a course with the Limestone District School Board. And two of my classmates at Loyalist College were actually alumni of the cave as students from QECVI. And CKVI transmitted a 6.5 watt signal on 91.9 from this two-bay antenna on the roof of KC. And the little Harris transmitter that powered the signal was inside the on-air studio. But that frequency, 91.9, had been used by Queen's campus station CFRCFM before they moved up the dial to where they are now, 101.9. So the following year, CKLC converted from 1380 AM to 98.9 FM, just three channels up from its sister station, CFLY, on 98.3. CKLC FM did stay at the old AM site on Dawson Point Road on Wolf Island, transmitting from the short STL tower on the property before a much taller tower was built following the demolition of the four AM towers. But as for CFLY, they are still transmitting from way northwest of Kingston. They're near the community of Harrowsmith. And in 2008, CFFX made the move to FM. They went from 960 AM to 104.3 FM from the CKWS Tower, making Kingston another all-FM market in Southern Ontario. And believe it or not, there are now, as of 2021, only two commercial AM stations still on the air in Eastern Ontario outside of Toronto and Ottawa. And those stations, both of which are locally owned in their respective markets, are Oshawa's CKDO 1580, part of Doug Kirk's Durham Radio Incorporated, and Belleville's 800 CJBQ, still owned by the Morton family and their Quinty Broadcasting Company. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, I'm going to put together another video about how AM broadcasting works because it is quite different from FM and TV. And I'm also going to bring you another video from earlier in 2006, some photos from a, another Kingston radio tour, this time at the Princess Street studios of CKLC and CFLY. And we'll journey to Carruthers Hall at Queen's University for the campus station there, CFRC-FM. So stay tuned for that. 